Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Dr. Ahmed al-Faris. One of the questions uh, the students asked me about in May, June 2020, uh, paper four, variant one. Okay, and question number four, what they ask? They ask in this question about uh, specific heat capacity. Some of the students, they don't know uh, how to manage about the specific heat capacity and they ask uh, several questions that they don't understand and they need some explanation. Now, let's see this question. Water has a specific heat capacity of 4,200 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. That's a, a big value for specific heat capacity. That's why water, okay, uh, is used for cooling system or heating system uh, for cooking. It takes long time to heat it up and to cool it down. So that's why we use water because it has high specific heat capacity. And the boiling temperature, the boiling point of it is 100 degrees Celsius. State what is meant by boiling point. Boiling point is the temperature, the temperature at which the uh, water is a transfer from what? From uh, liquid into gas. The temperature at which the liquid is turned into gas. Part B, the mass, okay, okay, a mass of 0 0.3 kilogram of water is boiling, uh, okay, it's at boiling point, okay, poured into a copper container, which initially at 11 degrees Celsius, this is the initial temperature for whom, for the copper. After a few seconds, okay, the temperature of the container and the water, both of them is what? 95 degrees Celsius. So the initial temperature of water, okay, was 100 degrees Celsius. The mixture together, the water and the copper container, it was 95. Calculate the energy transferred from the water to the copper. Why from the water to the copper? Because water has a higher temperature and copper has lower temperature and the energy transferred from the hotter to the colder. So water, is losing energy and copper is gaining energy. Calculate the energy transferred from the water. So we know that energy equal uh, mass times specific heat capacity times change in what? In temperature. And as we know that the mass is given, which is 0 0.3 multiplied by the specific heat capacity, which is 4,200 multiplied by the change of the temperature, which is only five degrees, it's 100 minus 95, so which is 5. By using the calculator, the answer is 6,300 joules. This is the energy that we assume is transferred from the water to whom? To the copper, okay, directly, because copper is a good conductor, it absorbs the heat. Calculate the thermal capacity of the copper. Now, they didn't ask about the specific heat capacity. They asked about the thermal capacity of the whole copper container because we don't know how much the mass of it. Now, we know that energy equal M, C, what? Delta, theta. Now, mass times specific heat capacity together, they call it what? Uh, thermal capacity. They use ca capital C like this. So this is the energy, which is 6,300, equal to the thermal capacity, multiplied by the change of the temperature, which is 95 minus how much? Minus 11, okay? Which is 84. By dividing this, so the specific heat capacity, the thermal capacity of, of the copper container is 75 joule per degree Celsius for the whole body. We don't know how many grams it is. So we have to com compare between specific heat capacity and thermal capacity. Thermal capacity without mass, okay? Now, then what they ask here, they say that water from container evaporates and the temperature of the remaining water decreases slowly. Okay, it's wet, and the water evaporates from it. Okay, you get colder. Why? Because you lose energy. Type of what they ask here. Explain in terms of molecules, okay, why the evaporation causes the temperature of the remaining water decrease. Now look here, Yashabab. Now we know that to evaporate, we need to break bonds between the molecules to turn into gas and escape. Now, who do that? The most energetic molecules. As the most energetic molecules, they use energy, okay, to do work against the, the, the bonds, to break it and leave, they leave. They leave what remains inside that the molecules with least 
what kinetic energy or least energy inside. So that, that, that why the total temperature for the remaining liquid what decreases, okay? So what they ask here, okay, what we are going to say, the most, the most energetic molecules gain high enough energy to do work against the bonds bonds to break them and escape making the remaining liquid uh, molecules The remaining, hold on, the remaining molecules with lower what? Lower energy with lower energy stays, stay and decrease the temperature. Now this question remind me about another question in the year 2009, I think question number uh, eight or nine, let's, uh, yes, question number nine. In this question number nine, what they ask? They ask from beginning, okay, Define or state what is meant by what? Define what is meant by specific heat capacity. Now, specific heat capacity, as we know, okay, is the amount of energy needed to change the temperature of one uh, of one kilogram by one degree Celsius. Again, in this question, so what is meant by the uh, term specific heat capacity? The amount of energy, the amount of energy needed to change the temperature of one gram or one kilogram, one kilogram of a, a matter, or a certain element by one degree Celsius. So what are the terminology or the keywords that they are looking for? It? They are talking about energy, about the, man, the mass, which is one kilogram and the change of the temperature is supposed to be one degree Celsius, okay? Next, water has a high specific heat capacity, as I told you before. So because water has very high specific heat capacity, now is it advantage or disadvantage to use water in cooking? Now, usually they say that it's a disadvantage, okay? Water has a very high specific heat capacity. So just why it might be a disadvantage of using water in cooking, because it takes long time to heat up or it, it, what, it takes a lot of energy. So why? It takes long time to heat up and so much energy. Next question here in this part, what they ask. They say that we have a lot of information they said in the figure, they illustrate an experiment to measure the specific heat capacity of some, some certain metal, okay? So what they do, they heat it up in boiling water. That means the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. And they what? then they say that they transfer it directly from this water, okay, boiling water, that means it has 100 degrees Celsius inside this calorimeter, 
okay, that it contains some certain water with a thermometer and stir with the lid, okay? The piece of metal, what they do, the piece of metal is heated up, okay, in boiling water until it, it reaches the temperature of the water, which is 100 degrees Celsius, okay? It then transfer rapidly, so it doesn't lose energy by transferring energy from uh, through the air or the surrounding, to uh, some water in the well-insulated cup, the calorie meter, they call it. A very sensitive thermometer is used to measure the initial and the final temperature of the water in the cup before and after heating up by the metal container here, okay? What this is, the specific heat capacity of the water, which is 4,200 uh, joule per kilogram degree Celsius or Kelvin. The readings from the experiment are shown. The mass of the metal, okay, is 0 0.05. The mass of the water, this is the mass of the metal, okay, M, and this is the mass of the water, W, okay, is 0 0.2 kilogram. And the initial temperature of the water is uh, in the cup, it was like this. And the initial temperature and the final sorry, temperature of the water Okay, it was like this. This final temperature also is the final temperature for the metal, and we know that the initial temperature of the metal, it's 100 degrees Celsius. So the metal loses energy, and the water inside this uh, calorie meter gains energy. So the change in temperature here, okay, is caused by the uh, energy uh, uh, gained uh, for, by the water and lost by the metal that is transferred, okay? Calculate the temperature rise, in the water, in the cup, uh, sorry, of the water in the cup, and the temperature fall in the piece of metal. Now, the temperature of rise in the cup, it's 22.9 minus 21.1, which is 1.8 degrees Celsius. And the temperature fall by the metal, it's 100, minus the fine temperature for the whole thing, which is 22.9, and the answer is 77.1 degrees Celsius. All of these two parts is one mark. Now, then what they ask? They ask two questions. Uh, 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 they, they are relative to each other. What they said, calculate the thermal energy gained by whom? By the water inside the cup. State the equation. Now, we know that energy, when there is change in temperature, is equal to M multiplied by C multiplied by delta temperature for whom, for the water, change in temperature for the water. So the mass of the water in the cup, which is 0 0.2, multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the water, which is 4,200, multiplied by the change of the temperature of the water, which is the 1.1, okay, 1.8, sorry, degree, uh, degree Celsius. So the whole answer will be 1,512 watt joule. You can write it as two significant figure, 1, 5, Zero, zero, joule. But we are going to use this value, okay? When they ask about the next part, as you are going to see now, they ask how much, okay, how much the specific capacity of the metal, the question, the whole question ask about that, the whole experiment. So assuming that there is only uh, uh, water gains the thermal energy from the piece of metal, not the surrounding, there is no energy lost to the surrounding or the calorie meter itself or the cup, okay? Making your answer in CI and CII calculate the value of the specific heat capacity given your answer in three significant figures. So we will assume that the energy gained by the metal is equal to the mass of the metal multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the metal that we want to find it out, multiplied by the change of the temperature of whom? Of the metal. So we know that uh, 1,512, okay, is the energy that the water loses it to the metal is equal the mass of the metal which is 0 0.05, multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the metal that we want to find out, multiplied by the change of the temperature of the metal, which is how much? 1.8. And by using the calculator, the specific heat capacity of the metal, it will be 392 joule per kilogram degree Celsius or Kelvin, as they, they write it before, okay? Now that's part double I of this question, triple I of this question, and double I, it's related to it. If I did a mistake here, what will happen? There will be error carried forward to the next part. Last part of this question, last part of this question suggests one reason 
why the experiment might not have given the correct value of the specific heat capacity of the metal. Now, what did we say here? We said that we assume that means this situation, maybe uh, heat loss during transferring of the metal. Maybe uh, uh, the water is not exactly 100 degrees Celsius start to boiling. Maybe some of the energy is, go, is transferred to the metal cup, okay, or the, uh, the instrument in the calorie meter. Okay, so maybe uh, all, all these are reasons that the, the, not all the energy uh, lost by the metal, uh, the metal, okay, is gained by the water as the temperature is raised. And that's it. Yeah,